Oh, yeah. Teamwork makes dream work. Thank you. All right, back to temptations. I didn't know how to fix it, sorry. The technical communicator in me did not know how to fix that one. Um, but yes, yeah, so you've recruited black graduate students, now what? So eliminating privileged socialization practices for minority students in graduate TPC programs. So here are some of our presentation aims and goals for today. So we're going to discuss the labor completed by minority students, specifically black students, to become acclimated and sometimes assimilated into institutional cultures and the duty of the institution to address the, um, the needs and assist in this labor. Furthermore, we're going to detail why this labor matters. Also, we're going to uncover minority student socialization practices, but then also we're going to look to one of my personal favorites and where I have a home for HBCUs. Um, review historically black college and university socialization practices, which are very different from PWI, predominantly white institution socialization practices, and then suggest ways to alter current socialization practices in graduate TPC programs. So to begin, let's play a game. So you can do this in your head, or if you want to stand up and then sit down, completely up to you. I would ask that everyone stand and then sit down if you've been guilty of this. But if you just want to check it in your head, that's cool. So, do we stand now? Everyone stand. Oh, come on, quiet. Got my eyes up. All right, everybody, let's stand up. So, if you've been guilty of these things, please have a seat, okay? So, if the thing comes up and you've been guilty, have a seat. So, you have placed minority students with one another without their consent or consultation. So, that means you tried to group them together. You're like, hey, you two should work together, but you did not consult both parties. No one sitting? Oh, Michelle. <laughs> You have placed minority students with a faculty member or multiple faculty members of color without the consultation of both parties. So you suggested, hey, you should go talk to this person, but you never contacted both parties. You have required students to attend graduate student orientation without proper follow-up. So you told them to go, but you didn't do anything to support them, mentor them, or help guide them throughout their journey. You suggest the student ignore or disengage when dealing with racism or microaggressions. Now, remember, this may not have been intentional, but I'm not looking at you like that, but you're looking at me. <laughs> it may not have been intentional, but you possibly may have suggested that they disengage just to not rock the boat or cause any more issues. Um, you have decided to address the fact that your program does not have a faculty member of color. So if you do not have a faculty member of color in your program, please have a seat. You have also observed whether your program has a strong sense of student community. So this is something that you have not paid attention to, the student community. You evaluate whether your student population appears to be divided based on race, sexual, sexuality, or other student identity markers. So you can look at your student population and you can see that they are divided based upon race, sexuality, or other identity markers. Please have a seat. Angela, you standing, girl. I see you. Keep standing. I'm proud of you. You have hosted informal faculty student events outside of the institution. Yes, you do. Oh, I was rooting for you. <laughs> uh, you rely on minority students to shoulder the burden of explaining cultural references and or cultural sensitive information. You have developed a course without including or incorporating minority scholars or minority cultural references to support the context of class conversations. So all of those things we've just listed are actually considered privileged socialization practices. Everyone in this room has been guilty of it. I myself have even been guilty of it too. So it's okay that we all had seats. No judgment here at all. So to help define this, um, define this socialization practice. So this is the process through which an individual learns to adapt the values, skills, attitudes, norms, and knowledge needed for membership given in an organization. So sometimes when we think of organization, we only think holistically, but we forget that institutions are organizations. We also forget that departments operate as organizations within the institution. 
So they are all within one another. Socialization theory better grounds the slavery completed by minority scholars to become acclimated in institutional culture. Now, as I'm speaking, you'll hear me sometimes reference institutional culture, and then sometimes you'll hear me say department culture. The reason for that is because sometimes those things are not one and the same depending on the university that you're working with. Also, critical socialization practices do not consider how participant may be left to feel, adapt, or assimilate to match the current the culture or organization which they are entering. So one quick little example of that, when I asked you guys if you have hosted a um, event with faculty and students outside of the institution, no one really thought about, well, how uncomfortable will this student of color possibly feel with alcohol being served at this event? Yes, it may seem like something that's really easy. This would be nice. However, I've always been taught that you don't drink in the company of other people. So you have to take into context that socialization practice, which minority students are often taught from a young child. So Allison suggests that academic setting can be described as a foreign place with a different language. So this is something we have to be considerate of. And more so, minority students specifically First generation students require additional skills such as study, socialization, research, and networking. So I know y'all like, why this girl giving this presentation and why does it matter? Well, I'm going to tell you why it all matters. Okay, so by working to better understand the relationships between race and other cultural rhetorics, which include socialization, we can lead to better understanding how we create and implement TPC knowledge and practices. Pause back there. Also, while all students must attempt to become socialized, socialized into their role as students, into the discipline of the profession, the institutional obligation to meet the additional needs of minority students outside the classroom becomes a key role in maintaining minority student retention and fostering diverse TPC programs. Student retention equals diverse TPC faculty. Uh, one thing I didn't want to put up there, but it's something that we also can remember, it also helps us save money. You remember, students are an investment. So you want to make sure that you're aware of what's going on when you're keeping these students and you're bringing these students into your program. Student retention, I think, sometimes falls to the slide. So we have to bring that back forward when we're discussing minority student socialization practices. And they also give you a better sense of graduate student community. Um, further in our presentation, we're going to see some excerpts from students who have mentioned the sense of community that is important to them at graduate programs, specifically students who have come from HBCUs or just minority communities. Community in general as a whole is important to minority communities. So minority student socialization practices. So in attempt to, you know, come into the program and try to get themselves acclimated, minority students will go out on their own to hopefully try to meet other people or other students and faculty members for mentorship, which results in a burnout of those performing this labor. So for those of you who do not have a faculty member of color, you have to tell Joe on the other side of the department he needs to step out because someone's getting burned out. Okay, so this is not to suggest that minority students and faculty not take up mentorship roles. However, institutions must allow for the natural fostering of these relationships rather than forcing them. That is why the first question was, have you ever put two minority students together without consulting both parties? As me and Cecilia, we have experienced this before. It's not a really good feeling to be placed with another student without having that party be consulted. But what I will tell you is minority students will find each other. You would be surprised. We will we'll find each other without it being institutionalized. Thank you, Cece. Excuse me, Cecilia. Um, minority students are always aware and sometimes hyper-aware of the surroundings and their interactions. These are things, again, that we have to take into account when we're thinking of privileged socialization practices because, again, they don't take into account how they may make someone feel or how someone may have to adapt or how someone may have to assimilate in order to meet those goals or that culture that they're trying to step in. So your joke is my microaggression. Prime example, most people will see my name and the first thing out their mouth is, your name is what? Is that how you spell your name? So that is a microaggression. Granted, yes, I know my name may be spelled differently, but 
your joke is my microaggression, okay? But then also I have something which I refer to as avowed embodiment in which minority students can decide how they want to present their bodies in different spaces. Sometimes it may have a negative impact, which may mean that if I want to fuss and yell and scream when it's very much so reasonable, but I can't because in my black body that's seen as defensive in an angry black woman, I have to be aware of that. But also, this is something that we should all remember. We know, as in your minority students, but y'all don't. And that's okay. It's okay, sometimes. So, minority student identity is very tied to the way in which we make knowledge. And I think I could probably say this about all students as well. Your identity ties into how you make knowledge. But minority student identity is very much so different because we start going to sit in conversations of intersectionality, of course, right? So minority student community, which is again, which is very important. For myself, um, Cecilia Shelton here, um, it was two other scholars that we had that graduated and two current scholars, we all graduated from HBCUs. So we had a sense of community coming into it and they were all UNC HBCUs. So we were all within the same realm with one another. So we had a sense of community and identity which everyone else did not understand. So we know but y'all don't and then minority lived experiences. So I have a couple of quotes here, but I'm gonna to jump to the one all the way on y'all far right here. So um, I believe the support from colleges of the same, from colleagues of the same race helped me understand how we African-Americans think as well as others of a different race. In most cases, coming to, coming to students of color with questions with a different interpretation of a class lesson can be just as helpful as asking a professor the same question. So that was the main thing from that quote I really wanted to be able to let you guys know. So minority students are coming to one another to better learn this information. But then I think it's really important for faculty to be very, to be held accountable for this as well to be made aware. So historically black college university socialization practices. So at this time, there was not a TPC program housed at an HBCU, thus removing the option for an HBCU and culture education experience. So you're left to go to a PWI which is not a bad thing. However, students do wish to go to universities that take into account the culture of which they come and accept those as part of the knowledge making that they're doing. So again, the sense of community, and then they also go into professional versus code switching, which my future, my panelist here, um, co-panelist, excuse me, Connie, will also be speaking on further. So moving socialization practices forward in TPC programs. So to help alleviate the labor of mentorship completed by minority students and faculty, mentorship can be taken up by other faculty members. However, they must have an understanding of how one's cultural centricity impacts how the mentoring process is designed, implemented, and evaluated. So again, we can make John possibly go out there and be a mentor, but let's be real here. Do you know John really gonna help somebody and be more aware of the cultural sensitivity? If not, then you need to go ahead and have a conversation with John. Is anyone named John? Okay. <laughs> in building upon mentor relationships, department communities and institutions will become better acclimated with social and cultural differences possessed by minority students. And departments should implement critical race pedagogy to better address the needs of their minority students. So also keep moving forward. Hold faculty and students, I wanna repeat that. Hold faculty and your students responsible for continuing privileged socialization practices. I think back to when we had entered and brought in two new students into our program and the only students that those um, minority young ladies met were other black students. Students of no other race had came into contact with these students probably until maybe in December and these students entered in August. I also included this quote here from a student that graduated. The most apparent situation that I came across as a student in the graduate program was when a Caucasian male specified that he did not that know that white male privilege existed. And I followed up that question and asked him, did the teacher check it? And he said, no. So you cannot allow these practices to continue in your classroom to hold yourself accountable as well as your students. Furthermore, what I'm sure, just ask. If you don't know, ask. However, be aware that this can be served as labor. There is no need to gawk at cultural references. If you don't know, simply just ask them. Or Google, as Cece has said here. 
Also, revised courses and syllabi include minority scholars and minority cultural references to support the context of class conversations. Trust me, you can find a whole lot of things that impact other students in different ways. By doing so, you allow the way that students make knowledge to become a part of your syllabi in your classrooms, but also you allow that knowledge to be made differently. It'll impact students very differently. So for myself, racial identity markers has a very close home for me where it does not for other students. So that's one of those things that I pull in for myself. Become aware of how your institution defines diversity and how this may align with your department definition of diversity. For some universities, diver for some universities diversity equals commodification of black and brown bodies. What does it really mean for your department? Make sure you know the difference. Also, allow minority students to make knowledge based on personal lived experience and previous acquired knowledge. So in conclusion, allow minority students propose values, skills, and attitudes and norms become a part of the institution rather than dismissed. Stop dismissing it. A lot of times for students proposing a project you don't understand, because that is a part of the socialization, go forward and try to help them understand it. Go forward with yourself, do the further research. Don't depend upon that student to explain it all to you. I can't tell you guys how many times I've had to explain to people what an HBCU is. Google it. Simple things. And those aiming to diversify their TPC program must rethink their socialization practices aimed to foster stronger relationships of trust, because that's a very important thing, with minority students, gain better insight into minority student enculturation and its impact on how students learn to apply knowledge and how their enculturation can shape the field of TPC overall. Thank you.